Hey, I decided to make that crazy step and invest more money into the laptop than I did for my car. Obviously, I'm a sheep and I purchased the new MacBook Pro. And as you can imagine, I am talking about version with space black finish. And while this baby does look gorgeous, I kind of feel now that I would like the silver one better. Just by looking at my old but still new MacBook Air with M1 from 2020. Anyway, I've spent some time with this animal and I want to share with you my experience and few answers. Was the upgrade worth it? How good is it really? And what may be the problem? Let's talk. If you don't have a clue where you are, welcome to Digital Markings. I'm the channel's host Marco and this is your dose of latest Apple news, leaked information, tech rumors and product reviews. Make sure you subscribe, leave a comment below. What's your opinion about the latest round of MacBooks? Hit the like button and don't forget to enable all notifications so you don't miss the next video. This channel is affiliate of Mobile Pixels, a company that features some of the most unique laptop accessories. I had an opportunity to test their Duex Plus portable monitor and I loved it. It comes in three different sizes and if the second display on your MacBook is not enough, you can go to Rio always. Check out the review as well as the link in the description and in a pinned comment. Get 10% off on online purchases. Honestly, I was dying to unbox this thing. But since I had some other things to do, I had to wait for the evening hours. You can imagine how impatient I was. But once I came back, I was all over it. In typical Apple's fashion, it just slides. Beside the laptop, I found standard goodies inside. The instructions with black stickers this time, braided charging MagSafe cable and a charging brick which kind of spoils the fun of these darker colors. MacBook Pro is impressive work of both design and technology. It feels amazing in hands like almost every modern Mac and so-called space black is beautiful, although not as black as its keyboard. By adding another layer of anodization, Cupertino Giant didn't make its laptop 100% fingerprint resistant, but close. What's even better, you can clean it easily the same way you can clean the dust, which now seems more obvious. Coming from the third gen butterfly switch over Magic Keyboard of my MacBook Air, tapping experience on this new Pro laptop is simply said better. Its display is vibrant, bright and super responsive thanks to ProMotion 120Hz screen refresh rate. Oh man, and look at those ports. I really didn't know how much I missed this, including the MagSafe connector which I didn't see since the day I sold my 11 inch Air model from 2014, good times. But this is nothing new with MacBooks. It's like with their supreme trackpads. You know how great it will be to use it. So let's dig in into what really matters, the performance. Considering I kept my old 2020 MacBook Air, I decided to make some kind of comparison. MacBook Pro model that I've purchased arrived with the M3 Pro chip at its belly. Its first commercial 3 nanometers chip. The specific iteration features 11 CPU cores, 6 efficient and 5 power hungry ones, 14 GPU cores, and with 18 gigs of unified system memory. Now, this wouldn't be a performance check if I didn't try everyone's favorite synthetic benchmarks like Geekbench CPU and GPU tests, Cinebench single and multi-core rendering, GFX Metal Benchmark, as well as Blackmagic's disk speed test. I mean, like anyone questioned superiority of 2023 MacBook Pro over M1 powered base MacBook Air with 8 gigs of memory. The real deal, however, was a simulation based on typical workflow for my channel, including multi-tab web browsing, watching YouTube videos and using Affinity Photo as my photo editor and my principal thumbnail design tool. The results haven't been much different from the benchmark scores. Now, since I was already recording screens on both laptops, I wanted to try out the most demanding task in my weekly routine, and that's Final Cut video editing at X 
export. But then something happened. While navigating this 4K video file still gave the upper hand to my MacBook Pro, things changed dramatically when I went for export to share a video for YouTube. The M1 MacBook Air entered the rendering process much sooner, and not only that, it continued advancing while the M3 Pro laptop seems like it refused to start and got stuck in the preparation. This really caught me off guard, so I made sure that I reset both computers and tried all once again with only display recording actively running. Guess what? It all happened again. M1 does the job faster than Apple's mid-range M3 Pro chip. I have said to myself this can't be right, but then I stopped screen recording on both laptops and suddenly MacBook Pro began to speed up while still remaining very cold. As you can imagine, I had to turn the screen recording on one more time and boom, the M3 Pro is stepping on the brakes while the M1 is dealing with both sharing and screen recording. Needless to say, I had to give it one more run, this time with all new video file, 4K yet as simple as possible with usual suspect quick time in charge of content recording. My 2020 base MacBook Air annihilated the latest MacBook Pro. Somewhere during the process I've tried Geekbench tests one more time and oddly even with screen recording on the M3 Pro was faster this time. Hmm. In general, there is no reason to doubt in the milestone of this latest generation of Apple Silicon, but this isn't right. I know that I will not use Screen Recorder until some other review, but if I want to use multiple demanding apps equally important and system decides to simply ignore or dedicate bare minimum of resources to one of the apps, this puts me in a position of uncertainty. Listen, the M1 wasn't spared from quick time intense recording but it did manage to deal with video expert. Yes, slower than usual, but not as much as it was the case with the M3 Pro. I wonder if anyone else had similar issue. If you did, please share in the comment section. Other than that, I've also compared some other features. Testing microphone and front facing camera. Testing microphone and front facing camera. which is no-brainer with MacBook Pro simply dominating as well as file compression and decompression. Surprisingly, airdrop speeds from my iPhone to my Mac varied. Sometimes MacBook Pro would be faster, at other instances MacBook Air had the upper hand. The question however remains, is this a worthy upgrade? In terms of display and speakers, it's an absolute win if you're coming from any other laptop. If you're coming from Windows, get out of there, you're gonna thank me later. Performance wise, only if you truly need more power, and I'm not talking about games because MacBook is still unreasonable as a purchase for such a thing as gaming. Stay with Windows on this sad occasion, but for intense graphics work and video production, working with larger files, the MacBook Pro is definitely something to go to. Yet the MacBook Air, even mine with only 256 gigs of storage, the M1 with 8 CPU and 7 GPU cores as well as 8 gigs of memory, is still killing it, and it's already capable of dealing with almost anything. It will not feel as fast like latest iteration of Pro MacBooks while working with resource hungry apps, but it will still do it. On the other end, for surfing, office work and multimedia consumption, you will not feel much difference. Yes, even a lower brightness of the old air still doesn't take any of the beauty of its display and excellent color reproduction accuracy. Finally, with all the spotlight on latest MacBook Pro lineup, it seems that we forgot that MacBook Air has two very important advantages. Its current more up-to-date version is still available for less money and if you upgrade it to 16 gigs of memory with 512 gigs SSD, in many ways you wouldn't need a pro laptop at all. The other advantage is it is just lighter and easier to carry around. 
also needless to say, you can still buy a model that's identical to my MacBook Air from 2020. It's all up to you. Personally, I will wait to see more experiences from other tech enthusiasts, especially those who will be able to dive deeper and provide more detailed information about the M3 generation of chips. In the meanwhile, Thank you for watching. If you like this review, please subscribe, slap that thumbs up, and turn on all notifications. Thank you so much for watching this Tomaki channel. My name is Marco. Talk to you soon. Have a great day.